Hello. You are most welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, to Tuesday Night Anatomy with Daniel Alcorn. Today's meeting isn't a real impartation woman section. Neither is it your understanding spirit of anatomy. But my friends, in such meetings like this, what I do is that I take you through some of the misnomers, some of the misconceptions, some of the things which, yes, they are important, but they are often overlooked even by anatomy educators and, of course, even students of anatomy. Okay? And so in such meetings, what I do is that I reveal to you why such things, yes, shouldn't be continued. Okay? And, of course, I take you through the right concepts. So that going forward, you know which right thing to say at a point in time. And so, my friends, in such meetings, we call it the power behind the voice. Okay? So with the power behind the voice, as the noted anatomical prophet, I take you through all these misconceptions, okay, try and clarify why they are misconceptions, and of course, bring you to the right, you know, concept. My friends, today's meeting, I want to take you through, you know, something which oftentimes, although they are synonymous, but my friends, there's a thin line between them, okay, by way of what we call the microvilli, okay, the brush border, and of course, the striated border, okay? By the end of this meeting, you should be able to clearly, okay, distinguish between these three things. Now, first of all, one thing I want you to become aware is that if you look at epithelial cells, yes, I've done several videos regarding these things, okay, if you look at epithelial cells, the point is that you see that some areas, especially for the simple, yes, I mean, sorry, I mean, yes, for the simple epithelial tissues, okay, which can also be pseudostratified, that's what I'm trying to say, simple, which could also be pseudostratified, what we see is that the plasma membranes of these cells, okay, they may show apical modification, okay, and so in such apical modifications, what we call is that one of them is something we may call microvilli which you may also call it, sometimes you may call it brush border, sometimes you may call it striated border. So my friends, then what is the distinction? Now the distinction is that whenever we talk about brush border, okay, the point here is that, I mean, strictly speaking, we are talking about the apical modification of the plasma membrane of the simple cuboidal epithelial cells, okay, that are located in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. Okay, now remember, all these three guys that I've mentioned over here, or, I mean, generally speaking, their function is to increase absorptive surface area. Now, whenever I talk about proximal cumulative, one thing we are aware is that by the time the ultra filtrate of the blood, okay, goes beyond this area, about 75% of the metabolites, okay, of the important constituent, bio of water, amino acids, glucose, and what have you, would have been reabsorbed, either passively or through active transport. So it tells me that as far as absorption is concerned, then this plasma cumulative tubule really has a role to play. Yes, and that is why God ensured that the apical modification of these guys, okay, strictly speaking, is something you call brush border. Now, the point is that, yes, so I teach in classroom, I tell people that it is not only the simple cuboidal epithelial cells, okay, of the proximal convoluted tube of the kidney that will bear the brush border but also the simple columnar epithelial cells okay that is located in what we call the gallbladder will also bear a brush border because one thing we are aware is that yes going in there i mean in the gallbladder okay the bile that is going in there is not only for i mean to say i mean to be stored over there okay but also it will be relevant as far as concentration of the bile is concerned, absorbing, reabsorbing out of the fluid in it so that it can concentrate it, not only serving as a reservoir. So I want you to understand that. And that is why, my friends, one important thing I want you to know is that in the simple columnar epithelial cells of the gallbladder, we also have what we call brush border. So I want you to understand it. So then the question is, if you've seen it, in the case of the problem of the tube, we talked about simple cuboidal epithelial cells. In the case of the gallbladder, we are talking about simple columnar epithelial cells. Then what is the point? My friends, the point is that it is not only based on the nature of the epithelial cells, but it is also based on how irregular, how it appears to be branching, okay, making the lumen a bit, you know, hazy and all that. 
And that is one thing I want you to know. That in the case of brush border, you see that it appears that there's some kind of branching, irregular arrangement, not vertical. Okay? I mean, not nicely vertical. And I want you to know that. And these things I'm talking about, it is under light microscopy. Now, the identification of a brush border in the proximal conductor tubule of the kidney and also in the gallbladder, what I want you to know is that we are observing them, okay, under light microscopy. Now, the point is that also under light microscopy, if I go to the intestinal epithelial cells, and whenever I talk about intestinal epithelial cells, we are talking about the simple columnar epithelial cells. Yes, they are associated, of course, with goblet cells. So please understand this. In the case of the gallbladder, we talked about simple columnar epithelial cells. Yes, there are no goblet cells over there, but I'm talking about the intestinal epithelial cells. They are well endowed. Okay, in the epithelial lining, you'll be seeing goblet cells. Some population of goblet cells will be over there. Now, the point is that over there, we have apical modification of the plasma membrane of the cells, the simple columnar epithelial cells, okay, of what we call the small and of course the large intestines. My friends, that one, strictly speaking, we don't call it under light microscopy. Those things over there, they are not called brush border. My friends, they are called striated border, striated border. Now, so the point is that for you to be striated border, then we are talking about that vertically oriented, okay, apical modification of the plasma membranes over there. But my friends, this time around, they are not irregular. That's what I want you to become aware. They don't show that apparent uh, branch over there, which is seen in the case of what we call the, I mean, brush border. My friends, all in all, these two guys I'm talking about, the brush border, and of course the striated border, observing them, okay, either of them, and the electron micro, for instance, transmission electron microscopy, then my friends, you will not call them by the names you use for them under light microscopy, brush border and striated border, this time around, we're calling them microvilli. So I want you to understand this. And that is the purpose for this, I mean, power behind the voice, so that you know the clear cut distinction between these three guys. And so let me just take you through these things. Now, if you look at this, yes, this is the, I mean, if you have a cell like this, okay, where I see that the simple cuboid left here, so around the nuclei, and we see that epically, Okay, you can see certain modifications. But this one, if you are calling it brush border, then the point is that it will be related, simple cuboidal epithelial cells, of what you call, I mean, the proximal cumulative tubule. And will also be showing some kind of irregular, you know, arrangement. Now, let me show you. Now, that's what I'm trying to show you. Now, this, I mean, a brush, a new brush, so to speak, and this is an old brush because you can see the irregular nature of the fibers over there. Okay, so that is what I'm trying to show you as far as the brush border, okay, is concerned. Now, so please look at this. Whenever I talk about brush border, because I said it's showing some kind of irregular arrangement, then someone will confuse it, okay, with something we call stereocilia. Now, the brush border is not stereocilia, although I'm saying that it shows some kind of branch that is irregular, okay, the point is that they are relatively shorter. And my friends, whenever you talk about stereocilia, like the one I'm trying to show over here, this one, the stereocilia, is related or is associated with pseudostratified. Remember this one, pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells. And these areas, we find it in the ductus, okay, difference, and also in the ductus epididymis. Of course, in the inner ear, you may see them over there. And so the point is that they also increase surface area for absorption. Just that if you look at it, they show branches and they are very long. They are so elongated. So this one becomes what we call the stereocilia. Although we say that the stereocilia is a misnomer because at the end of the day, the point here is that these guys, they are for absorption, absorptive purpose. Okay, that's why some people may say it's supposed to have been called stereo microvilli. Yes, any of those things, but of course, we are calling it stereocilia. But one thing I want you to know is that it also has absorptive function. Okay, and it's a very long showing that kind of irregular branch. That's one thing I want you to know. Now, have you seen that? Then the point is that whenever I talk about the brush border, okay, or the striated border, okay, now the point is that some people get confused with it because the point is that how about the apical modification, which you call a cilia? How about that one? Yeah, that one is also short, okay, usually they are short, but one thing that we see is that unlike in the case 
of the so-called microvilli or the brush border or striated border, what we see is that we see something called basal granules, basal granules or the basal bodies. And those basal bodies, okay, projecting from there, that is where we see the cilia. And so the basal bodies under hematoxin and eosin stain, routine stains, what we find is that they will be eosinophilic. They will be pinkish over there. And then projecting from it, you see the hair-like projections, which are shorter compared to that of the stereocilia that I told you about. Okay, so that's the point. Now, the other thing is that, now having seen this, then we talk about my striated border. Because for the striated border, I will see the presence or the evidence of the basal bodies. Okay, so for instance, this a simple columnar epithelial cells, okay, showing that kind of epithelium where it has passed in there, in the epithelial line, you will see goblet cells, okay, over there. And you will see some kind of area which relatively it appears pinkish, but this time around, we don't see anything like basal bodies and projecting from it, the epithelial modifications. So this one, okay, by way of a striated border, we increase absorptive surface area for the small and for the large intestines. Now, that is where some people get confused, okay, especially those in the basic school, I mean, junior high school, senior high school, sometimes we're told that if you talk about small divisions of villi, that will give us microvilli. That's the point that sometimes we are told. But the point is that villus, okay, those finger like tongue-like, club-like, or leaf-like projections that we see, okay, mainly formed by a plan lining and deep to it, we have lamina propria of loose connective forming distance. The point I want you to become aware is that these guys, that is the villus, okay? This is a different thing altogether. But I'm talking about the cell. If I take one individual cell, the apical modification of the plasma membrane, okay, increasing the absorption surface area, okay? That is different from, of course, I mean, the villus. So it's not small division of the villi, okay, or the villus that gives us the microvilli, no. The point is that that's extremely different. And that is why the small intestine will have villi but in the case of the large intestine, there will be no villi. However, both of them will have microvilli. That's an electron microscopy. But both of them and the light microscopy will have striated border, apical modification of the plasma membranes of these simple columnar cells, okay, of the intestine. Okay, that is one thing I want you to know. Now, how about the brush border I talked about? Now, if you look at it, this is the simple cuboidal, you can see the rounded nuclei, basophilic nuclei nicely over there. Now what we see is that you can see that projecting and therefore making the lumen a bit smaller, apparently making the lumen a bit smaller so that we can even distinguish this guy from what some call the distal convoluted tubule. What we see is that we see the apical modification of the plasma membranes over here, okay, making it, and they show that kind of branching, okay, over there. And this is what we call the brush border, brush border, okay, all throughout. That's what we see, brush border. Okay, that as I told you, the brush border is not only seen in the simple cuboidal epithelial cells of what we call the, I mean, prosmal convoluted tube, but also in the simple columnar epithelial cells. Yes, these are simple columnar, you can see elongated nuclei. They will also have epithelial modification of the plasma membrane. But this time around, because it's with the goblet, uh, the gallbladder, yes, in the epithelial line, there will be no goblet cells. This guy over there is something that we call it the brush border of what we call the epithelial lining of the gallbladder. Now, finally, what am I trying to say? I say that both of them, whether it is brush border or it is striated border, and the electron microscope, for instance, this one was taken using the scan electron, I mean, uh, microscope. Now, the point is that you can see all these projections, okay? All these projections. And these guys, they are those ones we call microvilli. Microvilli and the electron microscopy. But thankfully, we tend to use them interchangeably. But my friends, as a student, know the right thing. As an anatomy educator, know the right thing to use at a point in time. Okay? So this is the meeting that I have for you. As far as, yes, today's meeting is concerned, I've explained to you the distinction between microvilli, brush border, and of course, striated border. I'm very grateful for your time this evening. Have a good night, all of you. And may the good Lord richly bless you. Amen.